Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to find out how to properly mulch around a tree or just mulch in general. All right, some things you want to focus on and some things you want to make sure you don't do. So we're going to see pros and cons and the good and the bad. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. It's Mike with Jealous Lawn Care. And these are the items you're going to need to properly mulch around a tree or mulch a new garden bed or mulch wherever you want to mulch. So you're going to need a wheelbarrow to remove all the old mulch and dirt or if you want to go directly you can go directly in your garbage bags. Uh, and you're going to need a couple, couple shovels, one flat shovel ideally, just to make sure that you can get a nice clean edge. There's my flat shovel and then a rake so you rake afterwards so you don't have a whole bunch of mulch left in the grass or in places you don't want it. Then we're going to have a spade shovel to basically do most of the heavy lifting. Alright, so I'm sure you've seen a lot of different ways that people in your neighborhood mulch around a tree. You're going to see lots of different colors. You might see rubber mulch versus uh, regular mulch. You might see rubber mulch, you might see cedar mulch, you might see pine mulch, you might see a whole bunch of different things. You might see rocks or lava rocks. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do things. I'm going to go through my preferred method here. So this is what you don't want to see. You don't want to see a volcano of mulch. You can see how tall it's, this is. That's just not good for the tree, the roots. Look at that. I mean, we're talking a good, good foot, a little over a foot tall, just covering it. You always want to be able to see the flare. Now this mulch isn't too bad. You know, it's not too high, but it's not, it's a little higher than where I want it. And I'm sure if you go around in your neighborhood, I'll show you a quick picture here of one in my neighborhood where people just volcano mulch it. I mean, I've seen mulch where it's like, you know, couple feet up in the air and that's just ridiculous. It's not good for the tree, it's not good for the nutrients underneath it, so definitely want to make sure that you don't do that. Ideally you'd like to be as low as possible and also to have a good separation between your grass and your mulch because anytime you're cutting the grass and you actually have pieces of mulch that hit the lawnmower blade that can damage your blade. So first thing we're going to do Step one is to remove all the old mulch. Now if the mulch is in pretty good shape, you can reuse it if you want. But I just like a nice clean beginning. A lot of times if you go to you know, some of the big box companies like Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get a big bag of mulch for roughly, I think it was like two dollars. So. I mean, that's pretty cheap. You could redo your mulch every year. It's just a matter, matter of labor. And while I'm doing this, I'll also mention that a lot of the landscaping companies that offer mulching services, what they do, they keep the price down because of the fact that most, and again, I say most, I don't say all, there are a lot of ones that will do it right the first time, and you're wondering why it's, why it's a higher price to begin with. The reason being is because a lot of the mulching companies They'll just keep stacking it up and stacking it up and stacking it up. That's what a lot of times what you see when you see those, you know, volcano mulch mounds around trees and stuff like that. So that's because their mulching services that they hired are only to add a new layer of mulch. So they're adding two or three inches of new mulch on top of the last year. So year after year after year, they'll be halfway up the tree. <laughs> so definitely don't recommend doing that. Hire or pay for a landscaping service that will actually take it down to the base level, get rid of all that old stuff. So that's your reason for your added cost from those landscape companies because they have to have a charge, of course, to remove all the old debris and dirt. I'm also going to be removing the dirt, obviously, as you can tell. And the question is, how many tree roots will we see? Alright, 
Now my wheelbarrow is already full, so I will show you guys the edging that I'm talking about. So whether or not you want to install like brick pavers or something like that, that's your choice. That would obviously keep the mulch out of the grass the best, but uh, you could also do a pretty good job just by having it, having it basically start, let's say, from here and then go down slowly, you know, slowly grading down and then have a little lip for, the, for where the grass is. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Let's just get a good circle going here. What I'm doing here is I'm just eyeballing it, but if you really want to, what you could do is you could tie a string around the trunk of the tree, and what you do then, that way you can draw out your circle all the way around. Keep the string real loose, and then that'll be your perfect circle. All right? You can already see the nice circle come to life. Let me show you. A zoomed in view of that. So this is what we're looking for here. For your edging. This way, the mulch will continue to go down and it'll end up not going into the grass. After, of course, we rake all this away. Alright, now the next step is take one of these guys and lighten up the ground, we'll say. Dig it up a little bit just so it's nice and fluffy. And if you did want to, this would be a good time to put in uh, little plants, like some people put hostas around the base of the tree, which looks great. And uh, another thing you can do is uh, some of my neighbors have um, tulips. So you can put a whole bunch of things up underneath the tree. Those are great because those come up first thing in the year. All right. So ideally when you're doing this also, uh, you can't really get in here with a shovel because of the fact that all around the trees you basically have what looks like an octopus. So that's ideally what you want. That's where the tree flares out. So you want to get all the way down to the flare out portion of the base. So dig all the way down so you can see it's hard to tell in the photos, but so here's here's where it's flaring out. It's flaring out right here. Uh, big big tree trunk here. So you got the big roots here, big roots here, big roots here, big roots here. This is where it's flaring out. This section right here, I could probably dig right under it. So don't need to do that. Just make sure you can see that. One of the reasons it's great to use one of these because let's say your circle wasn't perfect. And if it's not perfect, this is where you're going across and dig in the edge line as deep as you want. So definitely recommend doing that. You can get it as smooth and as circular as you want them. All right? So. If you have little surface roots like this, you're going to have a lot of these, I'm sure. Take those out. You don't need those. Um, and th then if you do, but if you have some of the bigger roots, like let's say that maybe raise up, you can cut those basically because of the fact that your tree has so many roots. Let's just say a given tree, I'm, I don't know the number, let's just say it has eight to ten different, and when I say surface roots, I mean above the ground level, all right? So depending on how deep the tree was planted, you may or may not have more or less, so. You can cut, like I said, one here or there, maybe even two or so. You don't want to cut past a couple, all right? So if they're really bothersome, you can cut them. So that's one of the reasons why I don't like to do edging, like brick edging around trees, because you're gonna have some tree roots that mess up the height of the edging every now and then. Like I have one right here. I don't have, I don't have too many in this tree. I think I only have one here and maybe one in the back. So not a big deal. 
I mean, if you really wanted to be a perfectionist about it with those tree roots that are there and you wanted brick pavers, basically you could cut it out, you know, cut like an angle out or something like that, but that's not an easy job. So cutting, t cutting brick is one thing, but creating a, a circle to go around the tree root, let's not go there. <laughs> All right, here's my nice circle around the tree. And now next step is we want to either rake all the stuff off the grass or what you can do which at this time of year it's early spring still so the grass is barely starting to grow so I don't want to be too rough on the grass so I'm just kind of kind of use my hands all around get all the old mulch around the corners and everywhere else that I don't want on the lawn. So I did most of it already. This is just a quick finishing up here. And there we are. And of course, you know how much I love to use Scott's products. They seem to be the best. And no surprise, this is also Scott's. And still $2 at Home Depot on the Spring Black Friday event, they call it. Very nice deal. Now, there are benefits pros and cons. I'm not going to go through all the benefits about why some people use rocks, some people use mulch, cedar mulch, they use rubber mulch. There's lots of different types. You could look that all up online. Um, lots have to do with, you know, how much drainage you need from the water to the trees. Also have to do with longevity, how long it will last. Do you want color? What color do you want? There's a million variables there. So, some are better with bugs, like cedar, versus some will attract more bugs. I like to use nice red mulch. And I'm assuming I'll need about three bags for this. And what you want is you want about two or three inches. This will help stop the weeds from going, and also the grass. From inside your tree mulch. Let's make a bigger hole. Wow, got a lot out of that bag. This is why I like the nice red mulch, because it's such a, we'll say it's such a shocker. It looks so good, and then, like I said, mulch is cheap. It's just a matter of labor. But you want to show nice eye-popping curb appeal from the front. That's one of the cheapest, best things you can do for your lawn and for your front. So one of the things you want to do is avoid bunching too much mulch up at the base of the tree. This is actually the worst thing you could possibly do. Because we just dug the tree out. That was our, one of our goals, to dig the tree out so we can breathe. And so basically what I like to do is leave a little ring around it. You know, let's just say about that far. So maybe about three inches away from the tree base. So the reason being is because if you put a whole bunch of mulch up there, that's the number one place you're going to have insect problems. Insects love to just house themselves right next to the tree base like that. So definitely avoid that and create a nice level surface here. It's the nice enjoyable part. So I'm going to take my time and do it right. Because now it's all about presentation. Make sure I get away from the tree base. And there you have it, beautiful new mulch ring. So much more improved and better looking than the previous one, don't you agree? And this is a little bit wet right now. The mulch I picked up, it just rained. So once this dries out, it'll even be a nice brighter red, almost like an orangey. So definitely love this. I'm gonna put one more bag on just to get a full coating. There's a little bit of the back that I missed, but that is essentially the video. Thanks for watching everybody, this is Mike with Jealous Lawn Care.
helping you to make your neighbors a little bit more jealous of your lawn and your curb appeal. If you have any questions regarding mulching or lawn care questions in general, throw me something in the comments.